Hello, my name is Kai Kerwin, and today I'll be talking about parkour within pop culture, how it is referenced, as well as how it has been portrayed by video games and movies. In a world where gaming is a prominent feature in people's lives, there's one franchise that stands out for revolutionising the portrayal of parkour within media, Assassin's Creed. Not only has it redefined the action-adventure genre, but also transformed how parkour is depicted in video games, movies, and the media. Join us as we explore the impact of this staple series and how it's inspired a new era of movement within media. In 2007, Ubisoft introduced gamers to a groundbreaking concept, Assassin's Creed. Set in the Third Crusade, the game featured agile assassins who move fluidly through cities, utilizing parkour to navigate rooftops, climb walls, and perform death-defying leaps. This fluid and realistic parkour movement was a game changer, capturing the imagination of players worldwide. Assassin's Creed showcased parkour's potential to create immersive and thrilling game experiences. With each new instalment, Assassin's Creed continued to push the boundaries. The series refined its parkour mechanics, making moment more intuitive and responsive, switching to motion capture suits in 2014 with the release of Assassin's Creed Unity. Gamers became hooked on the feeling of freedom and empowerment that came with scaling buildings and making daring escapes. This evolution not only kept fans engaged, but also set a benchmark for other games and media. Developers took notice of the game's success and began to incorporate parkour mechanics into their own titles. Games like Mirror's Edge and Dying Light embraced parkour as a core gameplay element. Players could now experience the thrill of scaling skyscrapers, vaulting obstacles and performing acrobatic feats, all thanks to the huge influence of Assassin's Creed. Even outside the gaming world, films and television series started to incorporate parkour sequences capitalising on its visual appeal and adrenaline pumping action. Assassin's Creed had not only changed gaming but also left a lasting impression on pop culture. As we move forward, Assassin's Creed continues to inspire creators. New games and films are poised to take parkour to greater heights, offering audiences thrilling experiences that were once unimaginable. In conclusion, Assassin's Creed stands as a testament to how a single franchise can transform an entire genre and influence the way we perceive movement in media. Its legacy is a reminder that innovation and creativity can reshape the world of gaming and entertainment. Prince of Persia is a beloved video game franchise that debuted in the late 80s. This game has had a profound influence on the trail park on both movies and video games. Over the years, it has served as a trailblazer in showcasing the art of fluid movement and acrobatics. In the gaming realm, Prince of Persia's impact is undeniable. The series introduced players to a protagonist who effortlessly scaled walls, leaped across rooftops, and executed gravity-defying stunts. These acrobatics weren't just for show, they were integral to the gameplay, allowing players to navigate treacherous environments and evade deadly traps. This emphasis on parkour-like movement mechanics laid the groundwork for countless other games such as the Assassin's Creed series to incorporate parkour into their gameplay. As a result, video games protagonists now frequently exhibit agile parkour skills, adding depth and excitement to their adventures. Prince of Persia's legacy is one of pushing the boundaries of what is possible in terms of character movement and action, it ignited fascination with parkour in both video games and movies, influencing subsequent generations of developers and filmmakers to explore the dynamic and visually stunning possibilities that parkour offers. As a result, the iconic series continues to be celebrated not only for its engaging gameplay, but also for its lasting impact on the depiction of parkour within entertainment. When Mirror's Edge first burst onto the scene in 2008, it wasn't just a video game, it was a groundbreaking experience that would go on to influence how parkour is portrayed in movies and video games. One of the most striking aspects of Mirror's Edge was its first person perspective. It was an audacious move that immersed players in the heart pounding action of parkour for the first time. We weren't just controlling the character, we were the character, leaping across rooftops and navigating a vertigo including urban landscape. The legacy of Mirror's Edge continues with the release of Mirror's Edge Catalyst which expanded upon the parkour mechanics and allowed players to explore the city of Glance in even more detail. Players were able to enjoy the thrill of Mirror's Edge on new-gen consoles with better graphics and a new storyline which helped it feel like a more realistic experience. It's evidence that Mirror's Edge has been a catalyst, no pun intended, for change in how parkour is portrayed in movies and video games. Its first-person perspective, heart-pounding action and immersive gameplay have not only reshaped the industry, but also inspired a generation of gamers and filmmakers to explore the limitless possibilities of this dynamic art form. 
In this section, I'll be looking at parkour scenes from different movies and TV shows and picking them apart as well as talking about how they have allowed other movies and TV shows to have similar aspects. The parkour chase scene from Casino Royale is a standout moment in the film and a defining moment for the character of James Bond played by Daniel Craig taking place in a construction site in Madagascar. The chase features Bond pursuing bomb maker Malaka, who is a skilled free runner and parkour practitioner. This scene is a remarkable departure from the traditional Bond action sequences. It showcases a gritty, realistic and physically demanding style of combat. The parkour element with Malaka using his agility and dexterity to scale walls, leap across rooftops and vault over obstacles adds a fresh and exciting dimension to the action. It's a visually stunning display of human movement. Despite the scene promoting parkour as the main movement for the bad guy, now let's start picking apart the scene. When he reaches the construction site, starts by doing a stride to a form of cat leap onto like some sort of eye beam. As he starts to scale it, we can see the immense power he has being able to do such massive arm jumps. And obviously no, you know they use like safety cables when filming, but talking in the sense of an onlooker from the construction zone, it is, you can see he has lots of power. As well as his quick ability rope climb, his height drops are breathtaking since these generate lots of impact and if not controlled properly, his speed and control are amazing despite the height. As well as his vaults, such as the massive diacon over the table and while he is maneuvering, Bond is taking the quickest and easiest route despite Malacca taking like the edgy like parkour route. Apart from when he falls from the crane trying to catch up, but then he does a lovely underbar through a tight gap while Bond runs through the drywall, which I think is an amazing scene for that film. I could go on for ages talking about the parkour in this scene, but we have other things to talk about. So on to the next one. The parkour scene in Kingsman the Secret Service is a short one, so this section won't take too long, but it's still something I'd like to talk about. So it starts off with the main character leaving his, his flat and encountering some rival chavs that are there to beat him up. Context of the scene, he his stepdad was threatening to kill him and his mum with a meat cleaver. So he decides to leave and there was just a chavs outside so he decides to escape. As he runs off, he does a Kong bolt down to a low, lower level but his takeoff, which I noticed when analysing the scene, was from very close distance, which he didn't have to go far, but still very odd, like, especially they most likely got a stunt double for him to take off from such close distance. So as he lands on the low level of the flat block, he does an underbar onto a slope, which was followed by some strides to a lache, to a simple down speed bolt. This scene has shown parkour isn't, do you don't need big stuff to do parkour. You just need like small areas. This was outside his flat on a London estate. And yeah, I know like that's how they planned it, but finding a spot that was that good in a place looking like that was quite incredible. And there are so many people, like he uses it to like escape people that would have killed him. Like, so it's, and saying that just outside his flat, he was lucky because he would have been dead. That was one of the, that scene lasts for a total, well, a rough guess. It was about 15 to 20 seconds long at the most. But still, I thought I wanted to talk about that because that's not the kind of thing you expect to see in a film like that. So on to the final section. A staple in my childhood was turning on the TV to challenge which was on UK on channel 48 and watching Ninja Warrior I remember watching it like it was next like it, it was like yesterday I was amazed as to how this show worked looking back this was my inspiration for doing parkour this show started in the late 90s in Japan and was a competition that involved strength and parkour to maneuver for an obstacle course and if you made it to the final you won you would win 2 million yen which is about 10.9 grand. Over the years, there have been spin offs such as Ninja Warrior UK, USA, and Australia. This show 
has had a number of different obstacles, such as the walk wall, the quintuple steps, spider climb, jump hang, so many more. These would be performed over every parkour risk worst nightmare. Water. The way it worked was if a part of your body touches water, you are out. And you are timed and obviously the fastest people make it to the next heat or round stage, whichever it was called, depending on which version you're watching. And this showed the best of the best at parkour, like their speed. So the faster and quicker you were without touching water, obviously the better you, chance you had of going through to the next round. And people just want to do this like for fun, but then you get the people in there going for the money. And then when they fall into the water, they're not very happy about it. One example of this was from the UK version with Toby Seagar from Stora. I was watching it and his composure and his spotting of his jumps and landings, as well as his speed. Keeping on track of those at speed is a very hard thing to get done. So I applaud him for that effort. In conclusion, throughout pop culture, we have seen that parkour is included heavily, as well as portrayed in a morally good light which, as a free runner myself, makes me proud that I am able to have this urban sport looked upon as good for once. This is a change from other sources such as newspapers and news from the telly. Presenting this as a bad thing, like people doing parkour, they're like, oh no, no, no. But this is now the end. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.